Roman Aslan Siko died long before he died when he was rejected by uh, um, Marchand. The electorate rejected him. I don't think they were rejecting Romanus per se. I think they were rejecting, they'd had enough of the, of the then Compton administration. But I don't believe Romanus Lansico ever recovered from that. For different reasons, what was that? My, my prompter back there is telling me some, some stuff there. I, I like that, Junior. You connected with me. <laughs> so, you know, Kenny Anthony, I really believe Kenny Anthony does. Now, now I believe that. From the heart. And that's a nice way of, acti of saying acting on emotions. A lot of things Kenny Anthony said, I'm sure he's going to have time to think them over. I think he believed them. You know the things Kenny Anthony said about Frederick? I don't know if Kenny Anthony has evidence of those things that he, that he had, but they're not good enough to present to a court. Let me be very honest about that. You know? Because you can have truths, evidence, that are not verifiable, you know, or that don't stand up in court. Okay, we'll take a short break. I'll pick that up when we get back. Stay tuned. Um, I was talking earlier about, um, and it's very personal, I, I'm sharing this with you. Uh, why I was in a reflective mode on, on Tim's show and so on and so on. And I was telling you about the movie that was running through my head. And I was, I was concentrating so bad. We got to the point I was saying, uh, just before the break, that it occurred to me, I spoke very recently with the Prime Minister, with the former Prime Minister, and uh, Kenny Anthony, in fact. And um, because let's be fair, he was being Kenny Anthony. Uh, and it suddenly dawned on me that Kenny was less politician than I suppose human. But of course, when I say human, I am referring to emotionalism, um, like the heart thing and whatnot. You know, we pull his leg about that. I believe the guy really felt those, the pain. I really believe it, you know, on reflection, hurt. Hurt. You know, politicians can't afford to be hurt by something. I mean, take for example the IPA thing. You have to ask yourself, why would the prime minister on the eve of elections get involved in a Hale Kasse with IPA? Why? What's there to gain out of that? And do we talk about skeletons and all that kind of stuff? You think that's thinking behind that? You think that's a politician thinking behind that? Or a guy who is hurt because he figured he had done whatever he has done for, for IPA and could not bear to hear IPA turning on him. You know, very human, very out of control, emotionalism, very not polit polit politician. Politician would smile through that. Smile through it. Ignore it. I believe Kenny Anthony was never concerned, as he ought to be, with political fallout. I believe that's why he didn't fire Earl Buske. And I'm not being personal again. Earl Buske did a number of things as the man's press secretary that no other prime minister would have tolerated. You want to tell him Kenny Anthony that did not at any time realized that he needed to talk to Earl and to tell Earl that you cannot speak for yourself while you are my press secretary on TV. You cannot speak for yourself. And so you have Earl coming from China and talking about how Chinese women are cut. Ridiculous. And a number of other things. And Timothy Polion asking him to explain some of Earl's behavior. And Kenny Anthony goes, oh, 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 nothing to laugh at. And tells him that Earl does not come to you because Earl knows that half the time he, Kenny, would have stopped him. So Earl just didn't come to him and Earl went straight on TV. Can you imagine that? 
A press secretary free to say whatever he wants on TV.